Hello, this is Kevin McSpadden. I'm the chaplain at the Baptist Retirement Community in San Angelo, Texas. I want to welcome you today to our service. Uh, we'll be studying 1 Corinthians today, but before we do that, we'll have a couple of songs. But as we begin our service today together, let's, let's go to God in a word of prayer. Would you bow with me? Almighty God in heaven, we pause before you, Lord, this day, and we come before you, Father. And Father, we pray you would help us to lay our burdens, Lord, upon you. Your word reminds us to in many places. Father, help us to do so. So many things in life right now are difficult for many. And Father, we all can spell stress our own different way. But Father, we simply ask you to help us to leave those things that stress us today, Lord, with you. And trust in you, Father, to take care of us. Father, bless us this time together as we study your word. As we lift our voices to you in song to honor and glorify you. We ask it all, dear God in heaven. In Christ's name we pray. And my wife Nancy will lead us in a couple of hymns. Our first hymn this morning is Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. called Whiter Than Snow.
Thank you, Nancy. Again, our study today is 1 Corinthians. We'll look at this uh, letter in the next several weeks. 1 Corinthians was one of Paul's earlier letters and probably his most extensive correspondence with any single church, writing 1 and 2 Corinthians. We recognize, if you, if you were ever a parent, we recognize that most of the time, our most difficult child demanded most of our attention. And that seems to be who the Corinthians were for Paul, his most difficult child. Many of the Corinthians had been saved out of a life of degradation. Corinth was a pretty immoral place in the ancient world. In fact, the name of the city Corinth became a verb in Paul's day in the first century. To Corinthianize meant to live an immoral lifestyle because that was simply the reputation of the city. We look at the Old Testament, we understand the situation about Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, cities that were full of immorality. In our day and time, today in America, we've talked about, or through at least my lifetime, we described Las Vegas as Sin City. I don't know if it has a reputation anymore, but it's kind of the way we look at things. So to Corinthianize back then in Paul's day, the first century, meant to live an immoral lifestyle. And so a lot of these Christians now, Gentiles, had come out of that lifestyle, a life of degradation. And once you come out of that and they became Christians, that's fantastic. But with anybody, there's always a temptation to lapse, to go back to your old lifestyle. There's always pressure to conform, to compromise on who you are today and go back to who you were. So as Paul wrote his letter to the Corinthians, both letters, in fact, that was an issue. And so Paul addressed those things with that audience in the city of Corinth. Corinth was one of, four, one of the four great Roman cities in Paul's day. Of course, there was Rome, Alexandria, Ephesus, and Corinth. Corinth was the capital of the Achaia province. And in Greece, where it was located during that time, it was the most affluent city in Greece. It was the main sea route, east and west, across that part of the country. It was the only land route between north and south Greece. It was a major economic center in its day. The Apostle Paul arrived in Corinth around 50 AD thereabouts, according to the book of Acts. That's when he would have been there during that time. He established the church then with the help of Aquila and Priscilla. They were companions of his. And the church is made up mostly of probably lower class Gentiles. Again, these pagan people coming out of that lifestyle and Paul had to minister to them. Scholars agree that Paul probably wrote the letter of 1 Corinthians from the city of Ephesus around 54 AD. Paul addressed a host of issues with the Corinthians. The lack of harmony in the church, immorality in the church, spiritual gifts, marriage, Again, a host of subjects. He wrote the people to help them know, help them understand how to live their lives as Christians now in a pagan society. The church was brand new. The church itself, the whole body of Christ in that time was brand new. And so it was still a very much pagan society in Rome. So Paul writes to them to encourage them to stay close to Christ, to live the Christian life. How to be in the world, but not of it. How to be involved, but, but not entangled by the world around them. Paul begins his letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1, by saying this. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ, of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, and called to be holy, Together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul reminds Corinthians he was called by God. He was called by God to be 
an apostle. It wasn't simply Paul's vocational choice. Will I do this, this, or this in my life? Along the way, we realized Paul was a tent maker. But his calling by God to what he did, his vocational choice wasn't simply just that. It wasn't just that. He was called by God. God spoke to him. We know from the book of Acts that Paul had been an opponent of the church. He had been in opposition to the church until that road to Damascus experience where God got his attention. He was headed to Damascus to arrest Christians and throw them in jail. But God got a hold of him. He literally saw the light. God changed his life forever. From Saul of Tarsus to Paul the Apostle. He was an apostle. He was a missionary. He was a preacher, a teacher. He was an evangelist. He was a New Testament writer. The Apostle Paul wrote 13 of the 27 New Testament letters. God called him and God used him in an incredible way. It's, for us, it's easy to see his calling. He authored so many books in the New Testament. We see his calling, the calling of the clergy. But Paul's point here is more than just his calling. He's telling the Corinthians and us today, we are all called by God. All of us. Every one of us. Clergy, laity alike, God has called all of us into relationship with him through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God calls each one of us. Paul said, he wrote to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy. Sanctified. What does that mean to be sanctified? It means to be set apart, separated unto God. That's the true meaning of a saint. And those words are related, sanctified and saint. He says, you've been called to be set apart unto God. Away from the world, away from your old lifestyle, away from your paganism, away from your lostness to your salvation. Paul said... He was called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus in verse 1. In verse 2, he says, the church of God in Corinth called to be holy. The word called there in both verses is the same word. So Paul's calling and the calling of the Corinthians was the same thing. The same God, the same sense of being called un into a relationship with God. The distinction between clergy and laity is overblown. We make too much of it too many times. The roles may be different. The function may be different in the church, in the church body, in the local church. But the calling is the same. Called by Almighty God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into a relationship with God. And we have the same access to God, whether it's clergy or laity. We have access to the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. Also, we are all called to be saints. We are all saints. Not just a few special people. If you're sanctified, as Paul writes here, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, you're a saint. You are a set apart. You're a, a, a sanctified one. A, somebody set apart unto God. Our calling unto God involves both function and character. It's two-dimensional. Paul focused on his function here. He said he was called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. He addressed the Corinthians and talked about their character. To be holy. Called to be holy. Now Paul was too, but here again he focuses in on his function, their character. He spoke to their function later. In chapter 12 he talks about spiritual gifts. How everybody as a Christian has a spiritual gift. But again, function and character. Our, call, our calling by God involves what we do and who we are, our function and our character, what we do and who we are. Paul wrote to a people who were far from perfect, but he reminded them they were called to be holy, set apart by Jesus Christ, sanctified, called to be holy. He will encourage them throughout the letter. Don't go back. Don't go backwards. Don't go back to an immoral lifestyle. God saved you out of that. Leave those things behind. You're set apart now in Christ Jesus. 
called to be holy. Look what he says in verse 2 again. To the church of God in Corinth and to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy. Together with all those everywhere. To all those everywhere who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So his letter wasn't just to the Corinthians, but together with all those everywhere who call upon Christ for us today. 2,000 years later, Paul was writing to us, reminding us to be holy and live a holy life unto God through Christ. Let's remember that. Nancy, one more hymn. Our last hymn this morning is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Thank you, Nancy. Would you bow with me now as we close our time together in prayer? Almighty God in heaven, you've made a difference in our lives. When you came to us, your Holy Spirit enveloped our lives when we accepted Christ as our Savior. Well, you made a difference in us. You've changed us. And Father, help us to remember that. Remember that difference. Father, you call us all to be holy, to be more like you and not like the world. Would help us to be so today and tomorrow and always. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.